generation and load management of vessels. Dr. Kaslow has decades of electric power and related experience as an executive board member, consultant, and entrepreneur. He's a former governor of the California Independent System Operator and a founder of Megawatt Storage Farms, the Kaslow Group, Automated Power Exchange and Decision Focus. He has successfully promoted storage technology legislation and regulatory policy both in California and at the federal level. He's advocated new electricity market designs to promote the integration of renewables and the use of price responsive demand as well as storage to support high penetration of variable renewables. He's also co-chair of the OASIS Energy Market Information Exchange or EMIX Technical Committee and a member of the OASIS Technical Committees on Energy Interoperation and Scheduling. He holds a PhD from Stanford focused on economics, decision analysis, and power system planning, and degrees in engineering from the University of Washington. So join me in welcoming Dr. Kasler. So let me start off, Ed, by asking you, asking you um, you've got a very interesting background includes work with large organizations like SRI and Aliso and founding uh, startups like Decision Focus. So one constant in your business has always been that's been around energy and specifically electricity. You know everything there is to know about the California regulatory landscape and the U.S. in general. So we need a crash course on what entrepreneurs need to know to navigate the alphabet soup with state and federal agencies. For starters, what's the role that Aliso plays in California? Well, California the Independent System Operator runs the high voltage grid in California. So they take the wires that are owned by PG&E and Southern California Edison, some of the other utilities, and they, they try to make sure that every new generator and every major customer has full access to their wires. The second thing they do is they run the real time spot markets for electricity. That is, the markets determine the price of electricity at 3,000 different locations in the state. Every five minutes, and so uh, they're a uh, uh, not-for-profit uh, state uh, entity. Okay. Uh, so, with that in mind, I mean that's an awful lot of uh, data that is being accumulated on uh, you know, a fairly rapid basis. Uh, and there, uh, there are also other agencies that are influencing how we buy and use electricity in the state. For example, in California PUC. And the California Energy Commission. So, what do they do, and do either of them have programs that fund innovative technologies? Uh, the former chair of the uh, PUC in the audience, we know at least one senior staffer. Um, they don't directly fund anything in the PUC. They have various uh, programs that they may initiate in cooperation with the utilities. They will require the utilities to fund certain things. And some of those programs are actually hosted.
business to go to the legislature and get, get something done, ought to be done as a commercial decision. It's the interest of the rate payers or not. If it is, you ought to, ought to buy it. If it isn't, you should not. Well, yeah, that, that certainly is a good and constructive uh, example of how long it takes for innovation to happen. So uh, you've already written about and spoken about an architecture and a protocol for a transactive energy market information exchange, which, you know, from my look at it, it, it I would equate it to a revolutionary e-commerce structure uh, for electricity that reorganizes the current centralized command and control operations using distributed intelligence and assets. So, Tell us a little bit about that. I know you have a slide on that too, and, and how that can impact opportunities for a truck in the So this work, uh, I've been working on this. It takes a long time. I've been working on the concept of how you uh, do transactions on the internet uh, for power and, and use pre power like any other commodity. You go, if you go to the store and buy tomatoes, there's a price on the um, for a pound of tomato. You go to the cash register. Hey, today you go, you buy electricity. First off, there's no price anywhere you can see. Secondly, you take it from the cash register, and they bring it up, and they'll say, we'll bill you in a month. So you have no idea what you're buying, how much you're buying. That's, right. That's the way electricity is today for most people. We need to change that. Uh, the, uh, the standards group is, put together, is putting together systems for probably communicating the standard rate price and product definition slide that's doing that is OASIS, Organization for Advanced Advancement Structured Information Standards. Think of that as XML, uh, but it's you know, more than XML, it's the information that's being carried. For how do you communicate price and product across the entire grid? And electricity is special because the, the price of electricity at your house is different than what it would be at uh, you know, a few blocks away or a few, a few miles away. That's right, because it costs different months to get it there. And certainly it's, it's different, highly different across the country. It's also the most volatile uh, commodity there is in the world. So Oasis is a group that's right now, co-chair of the committee that's doing this, to mention that. And the standard we're writing is called TMEX, and I have a company by that same name. And so if you think of this as the grid, uh, as it should be in the future, and we can talk about uh, the barriers to getting there, uh, the TMEX means Transactive Energy Market Information Exchange. It's a standard way of exchanging information about energy transactions, specifically electric transactions. Now, the concept behind TMIX is you have a grid where you have wholesale markets like the California ISO runs, and there's forward markets for that. You have retail markets, which more or less don't exist right now. That's where you buy power uh, from the supplier. They exist in places like Texas and other parts of the country. And a limited way here in California, uh, that's what the PUC tried to do several years ago, and, and our legislature blew it. Uh, so we have uh, we have have this concept where at the top you have residential and commercial customers, and they ought to be able to buy from anybody else. They ought to be able to sell to anybody else. If you buy power, and you decide you don't need it. You ought to be able to sell it back. If you got a, a generator, if you got a PV, you ought to be able to sell whatever you like. At whatever price you can negotiate with your neighbors to find an open fair market. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to sell through the distribution company into the wholesale markets, in the remote wholesale markets by getting access to the transmission to do it. So it's the same way uh, anything works. So how do you go about doing that? Well, you've got to have a way of transacting electricity. Electricity, you know, the grid is like a big lake. You pour, pour power in, into it and you take it out of the places. So you have to measure what goes in, it's done by the years. And you measure what gets taken out. And the key to getting the internet to work was the concept of packets. IP, TC, IP. So what we're creating here is the packets of power. Each power is the app. Each, each, each packet of power might be a packet of power for a year at a price and a rate of delivery of quantity. Or that packet could be broken up into monthly packets. Monthly packets to the daily packets. Daily into hourly. Hourly into minute. Minute into seconds. And each of these can be transacted automatically, just like we automatically transact stock in the exchange. 
the technologies there to do that. We can transact on the New York Stock Exchange with exchanges, billions of transactions per day in not microseconds, but milliseconds. So there's plenty of horsepower, plenty of communication for doing those transactions. We've got to get the standards in place. And today, our committee voted out the standard called Energy Market Information to do this, it's now up for public review. You can go on the internet and find that, read the standard. There's a subclass of that standard called Transactive Energy Market Information Exchange, which limits the types of transactions that we do automated process. And that's, that's what Transactive Energy Market Information is about. That's what TUNIX is about. Uh, well, you said that uh, just a, a vote today on, on this. So uh, my question is, how, uh, what's the URL? The uh, group is Oasis Open, uh, .org. Uh, do a search uh, for that. Let's go to my personal website, www.cazalette.com. And there's links on there to get to all of those documents. Or go to www.tnix.net. And you can read about how the standard works there. So that would be the overall architecture and standard for that. But that sounds like there's still a great What are the next steps after this uh, is up for and goes through whatever the public review process is? So this standard is set up to work with any of the home area networks. It's an information standard set up to work with the utilities version of the home area network or the one where you buy Wi-Fi uh, uh, smart thermostat today across the globe here and you plug it in to consume these signals. So uh, these same signals that will go to your home will go to the uh, power plant uh, on the other side of town. Same signals go to the power plant. Same signals all over the grid. So it's a common communication price and quantity signals across the grid. It's not just the price. Just the price doesn't work because you've got to say, how much can I, am I giving you at that price? Or how much you pay? Uh, how much am I uh, uh, receiving? So these are buy-sell transactions at specific prices, the same way any other commodities transaction on the grid. But what are the barriers to getting there? Well, the problem is you see all these interfaces there. And as, uh, as one of the former speakers said, there are iron curtains all over the place. Berlin walls. <coughs> these walls have been set up to protect uh, the monopolies, mainly the utilities. The utilities have a heartburn when, when you have uh, open access. We tried to hear in California. And the problem is the legislature, as the former chairman over there said, we have to get the legislature thinking straight about the utilities. When, when I went up to the, uh, uh, to the legislature to promote the storage project, my opposition, primary opposition, was the PG&E, the same one who uh, said they needed the legislation. They were trying to twist and shape that to meet their particular needs. Who are their allies? Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. And I talked to Brother Electrical Workers, and I said, look, I think there's more jobs in stores than there is in, in these other things. But that didn't matter, it was a political fight. And a lot of money in power. Our, our last round of deregulation didn't get screwed up by the PDC. Didn't get screwed up by the legislature. It got screwed up by the combination of the legislature and the utilities lobbying for their own national uh, narrow interests. So we as we as the people, the participants in the market, that sort of thing, have to support open, competitive markets of power, just like everything else we have. Every other point is the last bastion of monopoly control. We have to break that open, tear down those iron curtains. And, uh, Mr. Brown, Governor Brown, tear down that wall. <laughs> <laughs>
opportunity for um, different solutions in this market space. Uh, how would you suggest that we go about uh, making our voices heard? What would be the most effective ways that we can start revolutionizing the market out there? Well, I think, you know, the, uh, I mean, it's hard because everybody's so conditioned. It's going to take time. Uh, I think we have to look at places like Texas that had some success in doing this. You know, other parts of the world, other parts of the country. And even in Texas, when we're allowed, price of electricity is allowed to float in real time between minus 30 and 3,000 dollars per megawatt. At any time it goes up to 3,000, because they haven't made the investment in the smart, the smart grid yet for making it, it you know, the price, if, if you haven't properly hedged against that, you pay that 3,000 dollars a megawatt hour. And so, you know, as one of the other speakers, it's a step-by-step -step process. We have to get in place the technologies that allow people to manage the power. We have to put in, not force rate structures on people, but give them the opportunity to buy power with lots of different rate structures. What TMIX does is a set of building blocks that you put together a lot of different rate structures that provide different layers of risk protection and price responsiveness to different types of customers. So we did competition at the division of rates. That's really hard to do you know, when you have a, a utility proposing a PUC under the guidance of the, of the legislature saying, well, we've got to have this set of rates, and I want to subsidize my people up in the, uh, the Central Valley or this set of, of low-income customers and all that sort of thing. It gets really, really complicated. And so you know, it's going to be tough. We're going to work with it over time. But I think it's possible, and you just have to do it. You know, I, I like that number, three thousand megawatt, you know, three thousand dollars for a megawatt hour. How, how can I, as you know, if I put panels on my roof, uh, will TMEX then allow me to find that highest price and sell it to them? What, what happens is, when with a system like TMEX, is you'll get those price signals, okay, and you'll have an opportunity. For instance, you you want your panels. Of course, they're going to run. You don't control the panels. Right. You control the devices. five minutes or every four seconds or every two hours. It's a smart device that are on. Now what other smart devices are you on? Refrigerators already have computers on them. Just about every device you buy has computers on them. This is a little more software. If I, if I can, if, if the charger on my laptop knows what the price is now, four seconds from now, six seconds from now, it can modulate the charger. My smart car, my, uh, my public electric vehicle, I, I tell I want to drive six hours from now. They can figure out, given the price signals, and I can buy and selling car. Exactly. Cheapest way to get that, uh, that car charge. And, and avoid the, those $3,000 spikes. And in fact, if the car allows for it, we can actually sell back the $3,000 when you have that spike. So we put that on all the devices. It's software mostly. What you need is the regulatory structure that allows you to transact at those prices in small microtransactions. TMIX will provide the software and hardware and systems for doing that in the cloud at the global scale. That's the vision of the TMIX company. And with that, the vision of having devices pushing all the intelligence out of the edge is accomplished. Now many people say, what are we going to do with all this data? How are we going to manage all this data? Well, if the decisions are made in the devices in the home, why do you need to import that data back to the utilities? They don't need it. Okay? They might even say, well, we need to do analytics. Well, if you've got to do some analytics, do it in sampled sites. You don't need every washing machine, every dryer, every pool pump, that sort of thing, data back in the central system. People aren't going to let you have it anyway because it's an invasion of privacy. So, of course, the intelligence out there, in fact, this idea that you need two way meters. Communication. Even that's limited. We can sample that because we already have internet communication with the house. So if you have a secure interface to your meter, you can do the calculation of the bill as long as the bill's simple at the meter in the meter. You just pay it directly through the internet provider, you know, to, to your bank. You don't need to go to the central billing system. So you got all these companies, okay, who are feeding at the trough of these monopolies, who 
want to build these big systems. And it's not working. As a board member of the California ISO, I had to hold my nose every time they came for another $100 million from new, to try and finish the software program to update their system. In the end, hundreds of millions of dollars. In Texas, they spent $600 million on the centralized software to try and run the grid. It doesn't work very well. That's because they're trying to centralize it under the old utility model, central command and control. You've got to break that model down, let people and devices make decisions. And if they talk together through, through these microtransactions, you have a much more reliable, responsive system that will be able to absorb the 33% of renewables that we're going to put on the grid. It's the only way we can do it. And there's a common theme about distributed generation, distributed intelligence, distributed management, and, and so that keeps coming up again and again, which I think does offer opportunities for entrepreneurs. Now we're coming down to just the last couple of minutes here, so I wanted to ask you to uh, shift gears here a little bit because you've been on both sides. You've been, you know, on the, the, the uh, ISO side, seeing the market at a very high level at the state, and you've also been an entrepreneur, and you're very familiar with the way it works in legislative and regulatory environments. What advice would you offer your fellow smart grid entrepreneurs here uh, that would help them achieve success? Well, uh, it takes a long time and uh, patience, and. Uh, and that's that's the regulatory process. Uh, when I started my the last attempt I, I did at uh, ex exchanging power like this called automated power exchange in 1996, about to deregulate. Before I got out of my house, the federal government came in and said, "You're a regulated public utility. You're regulated." The state of California set up a, an exchange to compete with me. The city was a victim of me for having too many computers. And, you know, and, and it, it went on from there. Eventually, we got the company running, the company did well, it was sold by the New York Stock Exchange a few weeks ago. But you know, it's, those kinds of companies, whether it's technology or software, in this environment are decade-long uh, challenges. So I think you have to be prepared for that. If you, on the other hand, if you get on, get on some of the devices, other people said that are in the home, and that's sort of thing, not part of the utility procurement process, then I think there are opportunities right now. And I think, you know, with the TMIX standard, okay, I'm looking forward to people who have ideas for devices. That's right. They want to consume these price signals. And these price, these devices may be doing a lot of other things. You know, like charging your laptop, driving your car, you know, running your washing machine. And the price of energy, the price of electricity, is only one component of that. So, you know, you're going to put together these systems for a lot of other reasons. But you need a way to actually buy and sell power at, at prices that are meaningful. And so I think there's a lot of opportunities at the edges of the team mix uh, system that we're going through. Well, it seems to me that uh, if people understand that there is an opportunity for them to perhaps make some money uh, or, and save money, um, and that team mix is the way to do that, that would be a very powerful motivator that would not only serve to compress some of the uh, innovation cycles that you're talking about, but also to perhaps break through um, to uh, the, the mindsets of legislatures and uh, regulators that there is a different business model that may make sense. Right, I think, you know, this gets back, and other people have said this, gets back to the role of Silicon Valley in the world. If we're going to be leaders in this market grid in Silicon Valley, we've got to have a local market. And that market is not large utility procurements that take forever. If you want to get the utility to buy something, okay, they're going to buy 8 million of them. And it's going to take them 8 years to decide what to do. Okay, you can't have a business model like that. We've got to have a business model where individual consumers or small companies are making the procurement decisions. And that means we have to go to our legislature and tell them it's essential to be able to model that out. It's essential from a green economy point of view. They have all these devices on the grid, they're responsive to storage, whatever it is, they're in the community, in your home, in your backyard, that you got the prices that make sense, the right people are buying the right amount of storage, but using it properly. That can only be accomplished in the system that opens up and some would say democratizes the grid. And that means you can trade, buy and sell power from anybody you want. The grid is just a common carrier that you pay a small fee to run. Power to the people. <laughs> well, with that, we've run out.
out of time. So please join me in uh, thanking Dr. Kasley.